Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Who was the lucky person? Bone Sweeper Deerbones! It's your lucky day because you are going to stop this very angry protest of, of random citizens. Hello, hello, yes, random citizens. Very happy to see you. Um, very, very good, very good. Very glad to see that you are coming to defend the, uh, the, the habitat rights of our lovely rescue giraffes. Never fear, never fear, because, uh, you see, our Bone Sweeper is here. And Bone Sweeper is going to take care of everything because she is moving our black rhinoceros to a new location. So hello everyone and welcome back! Welcome back to our adventures here in the Arid Pack, where I have to say, now that I've gotten into the swing of uh, really earning all of those statues and kind of basking in um, being able to like collect the best of the statues so that we can put them into our pixel sanctuary and possibly even recreate them in our zoo crafting world or even i've been thinking about having like a zoo crafting hall of fame where whenever we accomplish something big like a wolf quest generation or a sims generation or like other things like maybe one of the big events in tears of the kingdom for instance we could go ahead and uh we could we could have a hall of fame but we'll talk about that later because we now have a rhinoceros loose <laughs> inside of Tiffany's flower garden. This is perfect. This is so perfect. I love this. As soon as I saw that Tiffany had a house here and that she had a garden here, I knew this was where we were eventually going to come. Uh, but, oh, and I probably should, you know, actually uh, hang on here. Just realized something. Might need to come along and let's just, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, I think somebody was about to go ahead and try to destroy that. <laughs> but we managed to go ahead and stop her, thank freaking goodness. Uh, but let's see, so we've got our new black rhino and she is over here outside of Tiffany's house, which is kind of exciting. I don't know if she is very like shy around humans or not. Let's give that a little peek before we go ahead and keep building. No, she's very confident, confident enough that she can actually, ooh, what's this? Hello? Yay! All right! So it looks like our wonderful camel dentist, Tanya, is actually researching those sable antelope, but since our brand new black rhinoceros is extremely bored, we're going to go ahead and we are going to uh, have Tanya start researching the black rhinos, and we're going to come and we are going to get a, a crack team ready to go to take care of her. So let's see if we can actually hide our zookeepers inside of these uh, walls here because I've found that to be an extremely useful way to go ahead and tuck them to the side. Uh, we actually have <gasps> sand artist Wisty Fish. You're all the way out here already. Here, I'm gonna give you a bonus. There you go. I'm sure that Tiffany is just like, oh, a couple hundred dollars, like, that might get you a snack for lunch or like a nice drink or something, right? <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and have sand artist Wisty Fish. Um, I guess, how many keepers do we have? Oh, porcupine quill counter Megan needs a little bit of help too. Um, and Mirage Sparter Machu is quite tired. So you know what? I think we need to get some more keepers uh, so that we can have everybody help out. <gasps> it's Camel Dentist Tanya! She's conducting her research, yes! Hopefully we'll find more things to go ahead and entertain our wonderful black rhino in just a moment here. But for now, let's come on in. Let's make sure that we have a lovely little staff room for everyone to kind of catch their breath in. I have a feeling that it's going to be quite interesting keeping a rhinoceros <laughs> of all things like in Tanya's uh, or in, excuse me, Tiffany's like mansion house. So we'll put a little staff room in here. I like it. I like it. Really love the fact that, yeah, okay, I'm going to preen a little bit like a, like a, 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 I guess a pea hen doesn't really preen. Does a pea fowl, like, female, does she ever just kind of strut her stuff confidently? Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, he knows how to go ahead and show off his feathers, but I'm pretty cool too. I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're pretty cool, uh, and we're gonna go ahead and strut our stuff and say, look at how much 
money we're making. Yes, we're not even charging people very much money because I feel bad that they're mostly going to be passing out from heat stroke and possibly have to sign a waiver before they show up. And we aren't even working on any of those marketing campaigns. Hello, we could definitely be uh, having some high impact. What would Tiffany do? She would definitely do like a viral video. That would be like the first thing she would work on. And then I think we're also going to put ourselves on cereal boxes because I could see her wanting to be there. And then, um, you know what? I could see her wanting to do a late night talk show. There we go. We'll just say that Tiffany is out doing the good work of spreading the word of our amazing facilities. And we'll just kind of, you know, act now for the price change here at our wonderful, like, we are actually in the Sahara Desert, which is like in, around Saudi Arabia, actually. Wait a second. No, we're in Saudi Arabia. Is that in the Sahara Desert? I'm going to say we're in the Sahara Desert because like, look at this. Look at this. It looks suspiciously like some of the new areas in Final Fantasy 17, but you didn't hear me say that. <clears throat> All right. So where were we? Let me go ahead and pop in a couple more staff members, including, dun, 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 Miss Maru. Maru, hey. So you are going to be, um, let's see, the gardener turned rhino keeper. Uh, let's see, very surprised gardener. There we go, Maru, ah, Maru. Oh my gosh, Maru. And it's been such a delight having you around for for just joining in on all of the adventures. I know you're still quite new in our little our little group, and it's just been so much fun to see you there. And now here you are too. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and give you a new work zone so that you'll stay over here and you guys may notice something uh, kind of special, but we do have a brand new habitat built around Tiffany's house as well. We'll look into that in just a minute, but for now we're gonna have uh, this just be Tiffany's tower. There we go. And then we're going to come over to, huh. So we have Sandcat Alley, Prickly Pear Path of Porcupines, but we don't actually have an area for over here, do we? Whoops. All right, well, let's, let's take care of this as well. Uh, we have a spot for keepers. We have a spot for staff. Whoop, and there's our giraffes. So then this is going to be the um, dance of the dunes. Dance of the dunes. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I was trying to figure out like most of them are hoof species, but whatever. Uh, and I think we might need a couple more staff members. So let's go ahead. And we are also going to hire... Oh, an animal has escaped. Oh, dear. All right, we're going to work on that in just a second. Um, whoops. All right. Oh, no, no. Hang on. Oh, my gosh. All right, hang on. I need both of you to please work here. Um, all right, all right, all right. Here in the Dance of the Dunes. And then let me grab the other keeper real quick. Dance of the Dunes. And we are going to name these guys Gary Jr. Gary Jr. Welcome, welcome. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to have you be... Maybe something with the sand because if you're dancing, oh my gosh, do people do like kites in the desert? What is it like? Can you do like, uh, what do you call it? Where like you attach yourself to like a kite, like a paragliding thing and then you go behind something that goes fast and you just go whoosh up into the air. I don't know what it's called because I tend to veer away from extreme sports that look like I could break every bone in my body. But um, sand surfer, we'll just go with sand surfer. Like Sand Surfer, Dr. Gary. And Dr. Allosaurus is now all grown up. Oh my gosh, but so are his siblings. Oh my goodness, Dr. Allosaurus. Oh, I love you. I'm gonna go ahead and put you in the Trade Center for now, my dear. Uh, it turns out that there's quite a bit. We have two other new little ones. Oh my goodness, and Arctic. All right, we need to come and check on Arctic. And Arctic is also feeling a little bit crowded. Oh, Arctic, you know what? I'm gonna release you to- the Oh my gosh. <gasps> they actually have a lot of conservation points. Okay, so like we're also going to have Arctic uh, be released. Arctic, thank you so much for having joined us for as long as you were here in our, our wonderful facility. And then let me come in and train everybody. There we go. And then I think we're also going to have, let's, Blaze, hey. So let's see, um, maybe desert, let's see, desert, desert temperature do you think, Blaze? 
Blaze, oh my gosh, like Blaze is like one of our phoenixes because she's been around for so long. I really need to make some sort of like special phoenix pin or something to like be able to give to people who have been in our discord for so long. Maybe multiple colors. I'll have to talk to our artist Alari about that. She's very good at coming up with cool stuff like that. Uh, let's see, but we're gonna have maybe Desert Blaze. Let's see. Desert Blaze. Uh... Hmm, Desert Blaze of Mystery or Desert Blaze Quake? Hmm, Desert Blaze. I want to give you something cool too, Blaze. So give me just a second. Uh, like Desert Blaze kind of seems sort of interesting though. Like maybe you are tracking the changing temperatures. Something inside of the desert. <gasps> maybe a shooting stars! Desert uh, shooting star chaser Blaze. Oh, Blaze. Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on. There we go! I love that idea! Also, yes! The mechanic research is completed, friends! That means that we can go ahead and start putting out what we need. Wow, we're getting really close to finishing this challenge! I don't even know how to, like, handle that! Leaving my spitting little, little, like... <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready! Leaving my little camels? But at the same time, we'll be able to tackle so many other projects if we do that, so... I suppose there's, you know, a, a time and place for everything. And I don't think we actually need to research the other themes. So Sand, Stone, Shaper, Dino Dave, and Solar Sunspotter, the Rhonda. Please keep an eye on everything for us. Uh, I was in the middle of doing something over here when we got distracted. I'm pretty sure it was important. Sand Cat Alley, Jerboa, Juggler, Canis Able might need some help. Mirage Spotter. Let's have Mirage Spotter go ahead and focus on Sand Cat Alley, and I think we'll be good there. Phew! All right, and then it looks like some vet research is done as well. How are we doing? <gasps> Yay! We learned a little bit more for our little, our little, like, oh, what's going on over here? Oh, the Forge Box can't be reached! <laughs> I didn't think about that, but my keepers would have a horribly hard time getting down there, wouldn't they? Can I just continue to put forge boxes down here for our porcupines? Because I, I I worked so hard to get that functional down here. And I would really love to go ahead and be able to continue to keep this chaos. Did that did that just did that just like break everything again? I don't think it did. So I will just buy a whole new forge box and we'll say we had some very expensive worms go in there. Alright, what's going on now? Oh my god. No! Okay, so it didn't count. Alright, well, we'll have to put a new type of food thing in for our African crusted porcupines so that they don't get too bored. Uh, Kitty, you doing good? Social? A little bit on space? I know. You had some babies, but don't worry. They'll grow up eventually. Alright, so our giraffes are doing a lot better now. Still a little tight on space, which surprises me because technically they should have enough area together. But you know what? Since we have this barrier, we had to put it down anyway. I just realized, why not just go ahead and like fix this? So, aha, uh -huh, that's why. All right, there we go. Well, maybe if we come from over here. There we go. We'll just come on in and why hasn't the animal escaped again? Oh, don't be like that. Don't be like that, it's fine. It's fine, Katie's just walking around. She's good. I guess you would have to worry about animals that can dig. <laughs> Just like straight up digging their way out of the entire facility. Also, I wonder if I make like a weird arched slope. If I really have to, I wonder if we can make some sort of like archway for our giraffes so they could just go up so that they have enough to uh, keep them satisfied when it comes to being able to walk around. All right, what do you think now, ladies? A little better? <gasps> it's a little better! Yay! And they just want some like long grass, less less sand. I can get behind that. And then Namusa. Namusa, did you? Oh, Namusa was just wandering around too. Oh my gosh, you guys. So sorry that we're so distracted dashing about, but you know, you gotta do a little here, a little there, tending to everybody. Uh, oh, and we have no enrichment for you. <gasps> I'm so sorry, Fiona. Hang on. Here, we've got rubbing pillars. Yeah, there you go. Uh, sprinklers for the giraffes. Oh, yes. Oh, I hope that that keeps them nice and cool and they're super happy. And then we'll get some nice 
Eating. There we go. All right, now our drafts should be a lot happier. We will spruce that up if we have some time. But for now, <laughs> we also need to take care of our black rhino, who I love that she's a black rhino in the garden. So I think we'll try to focus on her and transforming the garden, just ripping it up to make her happier. Whilst she's here. Oh my gosh, there's so many cool things we could put in here. <gasps> melons! Yes! I want to see her go ahead and like raid these melons because that would be so cute if we had like a little melon farm and then she just was like chewing through them. Oh my gosh, that's so adorable. It's like we literally got a black rhino just loose in our garden and the plant screens actually make a lot of sense if we like slide them in between like here. Oh my gosh, that's really fun. <laughs> that's really fun. And I haven't tried out letting the guests like walk under the plant screens yet. That's something I've been wanting to do for quite a while. Uh, and we can have her maybe have a tamarind tree like at the back here that she could go ahead and scratch on. <gasps> Look at that. And now we can have ourselves a happy black rhino. There we go. So let me pull up a name for her actually. And then we're gonna go ahead. This is gonna be Ripple. Ripple, welcome, welcome. Oh, yeah. Thank you for being such a wonderful black rhino addition to our facility. Let me go ahead and add in some information about these guys so that we've got plenty for our guests to go ahead and learn from. Because we wanna keep things we wanna keep things really on the up and up when it comes to making sure that people can appreciate the wildlife they're looking at. This is not just for like it's in okay the way i feel about zoos and places that have animals that you can see are that they are entertaining but the point of the facility should not be entertainment i i would hope and aspire that your own curiosity would be enough entertainment to keep you coming in and like wanting to see what's going on Unfortunately, not the case for many people, but that's all right. That's all right. Um, let's put these down along here. And then we can put in some nice cooling spots in just a second, too. However, I understand how important it is. Ooh, more of that research done. Yes. How important it is to associate the animals that really are also part of our world like that we share everything with with fun and happy times i i'm one of the people who really believes that if you can really give people those experiences where somehow some way they really shared an experience with nature or like the natural world or they really shared an experience with some animals then they are far 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 more likely to care because it is through it is through really caring about things, becoming passionate about something, that we love it. And when we love something, we want to protect it. So I'm I'm pretty like adamant <laughs> that you cannot expect people just to fall in love with animals that they've never even like properly seen. Maybe you don't have to see it in person, but at least you need to be you need to have access to. Uh, to feelings of awe and wonder in order to really spark the kind of dedication that love and care really require. And that's why it's so important to really like work with the people that mean a lot to you and make up your life to make sure that like <laughs> you, you are spending time doing things with the people who you really want to have in your life and to share that love with, doing things that, that inspire awe in each other so not like awe just awe as in like oh cool we did something fun together but the kind of awe that i feel for like my husband chips for instance when i just look up now and then and i go oh my gosh oh my gosh he's amazing he's amazing and he shares his life with me he married me he asked me to marry him like those are the kinds of experiences that build that ability to really fall in love even deeper and that build that that desire to go ahead and do the hard work that it takes sometimes to make sure that you're your best you to show up for the person that you love 
And moral of that story is that those are the kinds of experiences that often need to happen for people to care about anything. Not just like, oh no, Asabi, she's dying of old age. Oh my gosh, she died of old age at 14. <gasps> No, the most dramatic of our Dama Lama drama. <laughs> See, and we care. We care because she was one of our first. She was one of our rescues. I mean, think about the gut punch that would be to hear about like one of the Damas. Like, and they're not llamas. I'm sorry. It's just that Dama rhymes with llama so well. She's an antelope. Oh my goodness. Okay. We need. To, do I have like some sort of antelope thing I can put down? to go ahead and like honor her somehow? Maybe? Do we have a Dama? We only have a Sable Antelope? <laughs> She's so rare, we don't even have anything that we can go ahead and put down in honor of her. Can I put like, is there like a horn or something? Oh dear, like th the poor thing. Like, I guess I'm just gonna have to start with a memorial of some type. And, and we'll go ahead and favor her because she was the very first. She was the very first. And we'll go ahead and we'll make her like a, a, a brass, a brass. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, well, that's happening. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, all right, guys. It looks like I need to take care of something. Um. Yeah, that's going to take me just a second. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm going to go ahead and leave Asabi's memorial pot here and we can think more about how important it is to really cultivate a sense of awe and wonder in the things we love if we want to be able to have what it takes to take care of them. And, and, and my little soapboxes with that next time. For now, I'm going to have to make sure this baby camel doesn't like spit on anyone. But all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. If you would like to join me on this and literally thousands more, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.